Good morning to the uh, PPIUD team in Sri Lanka. This is uh, David Canning at the Harvard School of Public Health. I'm sorry I'm not able to join you for the uh, training session this week, but I did want to give a brief overview of what we're trying to do in the PPIUD program. So this is a program about institutionalizing immediate postpartum or PPIUD services as a routine part of antenatal counseling and delivery room services in Sri Lanka. So what I'm going to do is talk, do some introductions and talk about the FIGO program. There are essentially two components of the program. One is run by FIGO, by the Sri Lankan College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which is the implementation part. But this training program and the role of the Harvard School of Public Health is to be involved in the research component, which is an evaluation of how the implementation is going. So the Federation Internationale of Gynecology and Obstetrics has a six-country implementation program, and Sri Lanka is just one of those countries. And the research program is taking place in three countries. I will um, I'll just talk a little bit about the, uh, the FIGO program. So the idea is to improve access to postpartum reproductive health and family planning services. And the way that FIGO is trying to do this is to provide counseling to women during the antenatal period. So it's training counselors, particularly from the MOH clinics in Sri Lanka and midwives who undertake home visits, and adding postpartum IUD as an option in the mix of contraceptives available to women after they deliver children. And one of the major reasons for this is to try to improve birth spacing. Short birth intervals have high health risks, both for the mother and the child. So one thing we would like to achieve is a lengthening of birth intervals to at least three years. So to have three years between births, which is the gap recommended by the World Health Organization. As well as providing counseling in the antenatal period, the FIGO and the Sri Lankan College of Obstetrics and Gynecology is also training doctors to do postpartum IUD insertions and providing equipment and training to doctors in hospitals around Sri Lanka. So the postpartum IUD is a long-acting reversible method of family planning. It lasts at least five years, uh, and it has the advantage that once it's inserted, no further action on the part of the women is necessary. So it tends to have very low failure rates compared to other methods, like the pill and the condom. It also provides women with immediate contraceptive protection after delivery. So it is possible that women wait after delivery to start family planning, but they wait too long and actually become pregnant before starting family planning again. So this provides protection against pregnancy from the immediate postpartum period. And as I've said, the aim here is really about birth spacing. And the procedure is carried out immediately after delivery, usually recommended to be done within 10 minutes of uh, delivery. Though any um, insertion up to 48 hours after delivery, we would count as a postpartum IUD insertion. The placement of the postpartum IUD differs from traditional IUD. It needs to be secured higher in the uterine fundus. And so the actual placement is different from the way a traditional interval IUD is inserted. And that is one of the reasons why the doctor training is required. It also requires special longer insertion forceps, the Kelly forceps, which aren't currently available in most hospitals in Sri Lanka. So as part of the program, these forceps will be made available and the doctors will be trained in their use. There's also additional doctor training to reduce expulsion. So one thing that we've found that improves the quality of the insertion and reduces the expulsion rates is an ultrasound scan after insertion to check the positioning of the IUD. So uh, on an ultrasound scan, the IUD can be seen quite clearly, and that picture can say whether the IUD is inserted in exactly the right place, or if it's misplaced and likely to be expelled. And then if it is misplaced, it can be uh, taken out and another IUD reinserted by the doctor. And that uh, will reduce expulsion rates. So the FIGO in implementation component has got several uh, aspects. One is, uh, as I've said, providing women with additional information and counseling through the MOH clinics. So the providers at uh, the hospitals, or six hospitals, and the associated MOH clinics will be trained in counseling, 
we have a, a leaflet on postpartum IUD giving information. And this counseling should cover the full mix of reproductive methods that women can choose with PPIUD as one of those methods. It should also talk about the risks of PPIUD, the benefits, uh, particularly the birth spacing benefits, and give women general information about its use. It's also providing equipment to insert PPIUD and training the providers. And the FECO implementation period in our six hospitals is going to be for 12 months. But we're particularly interested in institutionalization. So one of the big questions of the research is whether after this 12-month period, PPIUD counseling and insertion continues. The six countries that are implementing the intervention are Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Tanzania, and Kenya. And so Sri Lanka has actually been the first country to undertake the intervention. And in the Group A hospitals, and now in the Group B hospitals, uh, six, in, six hospitals A and six hospitals in the B group, have already started doing postpartum IUD. And the idea is to extend this program out to this uh, set of six countries. The FIGO, the International Federation, is leading the uh, implementation effort uh, worldwide, and particularly in these six countries. And in each country, it is working with the local partner, uh, the, usually the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology in that country. And in Sri Lanka, it's the Sri Lanka College. And this is the uh, intervention team. So the FIGO team is based in London. So Arul uh, Kumararan is president of FIGO and is leading the FIGO team. There's also Laura Banks and Maya Sethi on that team. And I think Laura and Maya may be actually be with you uh, in Sri Lanka this week. The uh, SL COG team is led by Professor Senan Yanki and uh, Dr. Ratnasiri. And I think Dr. Ratnasiri is with you at the moment. So this is the team that is actually leading the intervention and undertaking the training of providers and the training of counselors and midwives. What I want to focus on, however, is the research. The Harvard School of Public Health is conducting a study of the impact and performance of the intervention in three countries, Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Tanzania. So the research component is essentially separate from the implementation component. And the aim of this study is to assess whether there is a change in PPIUD services due to the FIGO intervention. So this is a short-term intervention in a limited number of hospitals. And what we want to see is, is there a fundamental change in what happens in these countries after the intervention? And there are essentially three different uh, research questions. The first one is a very basic question about whether the implementation works. So a lot of the data collection is around whether women are actually getting counseled in the uh, MOH clinics and the quality of that counseling. So is the counseling aspect of the intervention working? So when women uh, attend the antenatal clinics, are they learning about postpartum IUD? Are they well informed both of the risks and benefits and of other methods? And so they're getting the full range of information that we want for the intervention. Then we're interested in do women actually consent to postpartum IUD? What is the uptake rate? And I think the uptake rate at present among the Group A hospitals is about 8% of women. And that's what we would expect in our Group C hospitals that are going to be part of the research study. And among those women who consent and have a, a PPIUD, we're interested in the quality of the insertion, whether there are any complications, and whether there is expulsion. So we want to see if the insertions are, are working. And then we want to follow up women over um, a period of at least 18 months to see if there are any difficulties with PPIUD, whether women are satisfied with the method, uh, whether there are any long-term complications or side effects, uh, whether women switch to other methods, and whether uh, there are any failures of PPIUD in terms of uh, unintended pregnancies. So the first aspect of the study is really an evaluation of the impact of the intervention itself and the quality of the implementation. Then, in addition to looking at how the intervention itself works, we're very interested in institutionalization and diffusion. And institutionalization is really whether after the intervention period of one year, the hospitals in the study 
continue to use PPIUD. The other issue is diffusion, which is the question of whether the use of PPIUD expands to other hospitals and other settings in Sri Lanka from this base of six. Uh, well, it's now 18 in Sri Lanka because we also have the group A and B hospitals. But there are many more hospitals in Sri Lanka. And uh, some of the doctors who work in the intervention hospitals will move to other hospitals. Doctors in other hospitals will hear about this intervention and may start doing PPIUD on their own. And so the question is whether this small intervention can lead to a change throughout the entire system in Sri Lanka that have become institutionalized and last in the long run and also diffused throughout the country. So we will be following doctors in the hospital after the intervention ends to see if they continue doing PPIUD and then if they go to other hospitals whether they continue doing uh, postpartum IUD insertions in those other hospitals. Um, so the study period of the uh, research is for three years. Field work for it will, it la will last for at least uh, 24 months and I think we will extend it out to around three years. And my hope is that uh, in the long run we uh, uh, get more funding to do even longer term follow-up. So we'll be following up now for up to um, 18 months, the women who take PPIUD. But in the long run, I think we would like to follow them even longer to see long-term outcomes of uh, PPIUD insertion. So the research countries are Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Tanzania. And as I've said, the research will last for three years. So some of the uh, team members, I think, from Nepal and uh, Tanzania, people who are working in those countries, are with you now in Colombo. And uh, they want to observe the training and learn from the training of the uh, supervisory staff and field workers in Colombo, because in the next few weeks, they'll be going back to Nepal and Tanzania and undertaking similar training in those countries. The research team is uh, comprised of researchers from the Harvard School of Public Health and the Sri Lanka College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So the team for Sri Lanka is, he is headed by myself. And you also have uh, there Mahesh Kara, who is working with me and uh, helping organize the training uh, in, in Sri Lanka this week. And as I said, I'm sorry I can't be there myself, but I'm sure that Mahesh will do a wonderful job with you. And the uh, SLCOG team is headed by Professor Amantha, and the, uh, the leader of the, the national coordinator is uh, Ranjith De Silva, who is with you. And uh, there's a team then of supervisors and administrative personnel in Sri Lanka who will be leading the intervention, and they will be based in Colombo. In the training, there are five, uh, there are five administrative staff who I met uh, last week in Colombo when I was there. And the are 30 data collection officers and interviewers who are going to be based in six hospitals around Sri Lanka. And you're going to now have a week of training in data collection. Um, so on the interviews that will be done uh, and the methods of those interviews and later in the week on using electronic tablets uh, for uh, collecting that data. And I think I think I'd like to emphasize that uh, should be at the front of your minds throughout the training, is that for this research program to work, the key is really complete and honest data collection and reporting. We want complete data collection so that all of the women coming into the hospital are uh, interviewed, and so we learn about the counseling, even of difficult cases of women who may not have been to MOH clinics, who may not have been counseled. We want to learn about that. It would also be nice if the intervention works, and I think uh, the intervention staff who are with you there really want the intervention to work, but it's key that we get honest data collection. If there are difficulties, we want to record those. We want to know if the intervention works, and if it's not working, we want to know how to improve it. And for that, we need complete and honest data collection. So if there are difficulties, we really want to record that. So the point here is not to show that this program is working. The point is to really understand how it's working and what the difficulties are. And so I would just say that it's not our job and it's not the job of the research staff 
to make sure that the program works. Our job is to evaluate the program and get an honest reporting of how it's working. Then, based on that data, there will be changes to implementation, maybe uh, changes to procedures if we find difficulties. There will be supervisors who will uh, check data quality. Uh, the supervisors based in Colombo will be checking the, the data quality as it, uh, as it comes in. And we here at Harvard will be looking uh, regularly at the data and getting back uh, to the field workers if there are problems in data collection, if there are incompleteness or we see some uh, the patterns in the data that are worrying. So I, as I say, the key is we want to know if the intervention works and if it's not working, how to improve it. And I'd uh, just like to finish up by saying thank you very much for agreeing to be part of this PPIUD project. I think it's an incredibly important project because hopefully what we'll learn is how to undertake the institutionalization of postpartum IUD in a large number of countries. And then this hopefully will work not only in Sri Lanka, but in many countries throughout the world that what we will see is a, an intervention and a method of uh, institutionalizing that intervention that will work and that will provide an increased range of contraceptive choices to women and improved birth outcomes and particularly improved birth spacing that will improve women's health and child health. And I would just like to say thank you very much to, for agreeing to be part of this very exciting program. Thank you.